I wore clothes today because society taught me that this is my comfort level. I feel like I've, I've grown up enough now that I can get massages. I know some people get them when they're young, but I wasn't ready. But it's weird to go into it when people already are assuming that you know the way it works, you know? Because they have this whole language. You go in and they're like, hey, welcome to the massage place. And they have like a little room they direct you into, and there's a table and a little fountain that kind of makes you have to pee, and <laughs> some soft music playing. And the lights are down low and they say, undress to your comfort level. And then they shut the door and you get to just kind of panic for a little bit. <laughs> like this, I wore clothes today. <laughs> Because society taught me that this is my comfort level. <laughs> when I was younger, I had a much different comfort level. But once you get a certain age, that's not a good level. But they, they say that because they can't say, just get naked in line between those sheets. That's not, that's not gonna make you feel comfortable. For some reason, a panic attack is more comfortable. <laughs> you choose. Okay. So you lie down in between these sheets and they come back in and they talk all soft the whole time. Hey, Steve. Hello. Your head's in the little hole. What pressure level do you like? 15 PSI. What pressure level do I like? I never know what to say. Medium, I guess. Touch me medium, please. It's how I like salsa. Maybe it's how I like massages. Just a nice medium touch. That sounds good. And then they start touching you and I immediately am feeling like, medium's too much. Mild, touch me mild. Touch me muy less picante. This is a very strong medium. Softer, please. And they start doing what they think is softer. And I'm like, softer, a little softer. I, I guess I'm pretty tender, softer. Just don't, you know, quit touching me. Stop touching me. You could just rub all around my body. You could rub my aura. Maybe just rub my aura. Rub my aura while you and me listen to Enya. Just. <laughs> you guide me, buddy. Fidential is uh, not a foreign concept to me. Uh, the Steve Solberg. I'm. I'm. I censor myself all the time. <laughs> I don't... Because <laughs> I grew up in a family where we weren't allowed to swear. And, uh, I mean, I, I think that's pretty common. There's not a lot of moms out there that are like, just one effort for mommy. <laughs> just want to hear from your sweet little face. <laughs> from your face to my astonished face. Give me an effort. Come on. <laughs> let me... Hit me with it. Not a common thing. But yeah. We had the next level though, right? In my family, like we didn't say shut up. We said shush up to each other. We were at that level. Shush up. Sounds ridiculous. But I still don't say shut up. I think it's rude. Who says shut up? I'm still saying shush up. I'm still like shush up and dance with me. You know, I just... I can't say it. It's rude. But we couldn't say but. I used it twice there, but one of them had two T's. We could use the conjunction. The conjunction was allowed, but we couldn't. Two T's, four letter word, too far. That's when it was done. 
which is ridiculous. It was hard to tell stories without saying but. Sometimes it's easier to say but. I was talking about a time I was sledding. I was like, Dad, we went sledding, but guess what? The sled broke, so we just kept sledding down the hill on our butt. My dad, whoa! <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> you forgot who you were. Okay, fine, Dad. I slotted down the hill on my bum. Do you hear how stupid that sounds? <laughs> sounds like I'm sliding down the hill on a homeless man that I own for some reason. <laughs> Come on, Gus, let's go. I'm gonna slide down the hill on you. You're my bum. Here we go, I'll hold you. <laughs> my dad, we don't say bum either. Cause that's weird what you did with your homeless friend there. You slid down the hill on your homeless friend, not on your bum. That's rude. <laughs> also, why do you have homeless friends? <laughs> You're a lousy friend. <laughs> they should stay the night or something. I didn't know what to say. I was like, fine, okay. In our house, we can't say but, we can't say bum. What can we say? My dad thinks about it. We can say BIM. We'll say BIM. How about that? No, uh, that's a weird made up word, Dad. It's not a real word. It makes it sound like we're a British family or something. I slid down the hill on me BIM, father. What a great day. I slid all the way to the BIM of the hill. We couldn't say bottom either. Just rule after rule. It's ridiculous. It's not a good British accent, I know that. I don't know how a good British accent really sounds outside of Mary Poppins. It's a bummer because as a comedian, I'm supposed to be good at accents, but the only time I'm good at accents is when I'm talking to someone with an accent. I unintentionally start using their accent, like that's gonna impress them. Don't do that, they're never impressed. It's always embarrassing. I walk into a store and the guy goes, hello, so right out of my mouth, hello. It just felt good the way he said it. Why shouldn't I try it out on my mouth? And then he thought he made a friend. So he's like, oh, where are you from? Uh, Seattle. You don't talk like you're from Seattle. No, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, I'm gonna stop. I don't know why I was doing that. To be fair, you started it first. You're the weird one. Such a weird one. It just feels good talking to them. I have a friend named Patrick. He has red hair. He's very Irish. He loves Lucky Charms. He's very, very Irish. Every time I start talking to Patrick, oh, how you doing, Patrick? Oh, I'm doing good today. But are you making fun of me? No, <laughs> no, not. <laughs> I wouldn't want to fight with you, huh? <laughs> to a Jamaican man, I said ting. I didn't say it the way he would say it. I said ting, like I was learning his language. I wasn't like ting, like how they would have said it all rich and stuff. I was like, what's that ting? And he's like, this ting. Yeah, that ting. <laughs> you come in here this ting, huh? Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm embarrassed. Yeah, you need to leave. You can't have the ting. Okay, still want the ting. I'm embarrassed, but... What's weird to me about accents is that, yeah, full circle. Look at that, callback. Not really. It's that we all have the same equipment. Like we all have, even this weirdo guy, he has a tongue. No, he doesn't. He's made of plaster. All of us, we all have the same equipment. Tongue, voice box, and it makes all the languages and all the accents that you ever heard in the world. And so it makes you go, well, why does an accent persist if it's the same musical instrument that's making the sound? And that's because your tongue has a mind of its own. I know that for a weird reason because I have a permanent retainer in my mouth. Does anybody have a permanent retainer? See, I always try to play to the majority, you know. A lot of permanent retainer jokes out there, I know. It's a little hacky. 
it's kind of been done, but we're gonna go for it. It's worth the risk. If you don't know what a permanent retainer is, it's, it's what it sounds like. It's a permanent retainer. They put it on the back side of your teeth so you don't see it. And uh, the second it goes into your mouth, your tongue is like, did you know this is here? Did you know this is here? Did you see this? Look at this, look at this, look at this. How long are you gonna have this? This is a weird bar in your mouth. Why do you have it? Why do you have it? I'm just gonna check it out a couple times. Is that okay? If I just check it out, maybe a thousand times per minute, just real quick. It won't leave it alone. And when I first got my permanent retainer, my tongue was touching it so much to the point where it was hurting itself. It was like cutting it on the retainer. It had a blister at that point. It was like, ah, ah, this hurts to touch it. It hurts to touch it, but it's still worth it. It's still worth it. We gotta check it. I'm bleeding, I'm bleeding, I'm bleeding. But does dental pain feel good to you? Why does it feel good? Ah. Whether or not you've had a permanent retainer, you've had that same problem. You've had like a popcorn piece stuck in your mouth and you're on a date and your tongue's like, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. And you're like, tongue, you're not gonna get it. It's... You can't do everything. That's why floss is there. Floss is invented because sometimes you're not good at things. No problem, no problem. No problem, I'll just check it about a hundred more times and then I'll give up. I don't know that it has ever given up. I'll tell you what else is scary. Trying to get someone to fall in love with you. Have you ever done that? Has anybody ever done that? A few of you are honest. I like, I like the people who said no. I hate love. I just want to run around angry at everyone. <laughs> but you know what? You're probably the one who's more successful is the one who played hard to get. The person who said no. Because for some reason that works, which is ridiculous that hard to get works. That's not a skill that you use anywhere else in life. <laughs> you don't get a job playing hard to get. <laughs> Could you imagine sitting in your job interview playing hard to get? Do you even want this job? No. I got like six other jobs I want to make out with after this job. So no, I don't mean this job. I've often wondered if, as a comedian, like if this still works, like the hard to get, playing hard to get, if maybe I should just play hard to get with the audience. <laughs> up here, just like. Oh, I didn't even see you guys there. <laughs> you guys aren't half as cool as this... Antelope? What is that? <laughs> Deer thing? <laughs> it's Vid Angel. <laughs> Let's not make that joke. <laughs> Anyways, another thing that I read about, uh, you know, getting someone to fall in love with you is that the same hormone that's released when you're in love, that's also released when you're afraid. <laughs> same hormone, just lazy of your body, really. Just like, just give them a hormone, doesn't matter, as long as they're excited. <laughs> what? That's all you're gonna do, body? But now that I know it, I use it. I'm not a dummy. I show up on all my dates, you know, just bing bong. Hide your date! You know, and I just scare good. <laughs> Freak her right out. She's always, oh! <laughs> I like him. <laughs> He's a scary guy, and I'm into that. Something inside me tells me I'm in love. 
And I just think, yeah, I know what that is, because I read that in the library next to a homeless man that I love. <laughs> we go sledding sometimes. He's a good friend of mine. I have weird friends. I have, I'm friends with a five-year-old. Uh, he's my neighbor, and he's just one of these kids that just kind of shows up at your house, and you're like, okay, I guess you're part of the show now. You're at my house. Where are your parents? But okay. You're so lucky I'm me, and I'm just gonna talk to you. And I, I do, I talk to him, and he tells me about kids at school, and somebody who was picking on him and he was going on and he's, he's like, yeah, this kid, Jeremy, he's just a real juice pouch. And blah, 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 blah. Just on and on about Jeremy the juice pouch. And I had to stop him. I was like, hold on, uh, juice pouch? And without skipping a beat, he was like, my mom doesn't let me say douchebag. And just kept going. <laughs> I was like, I get it, buddy. I get it. I say Bim, my man. And I now say Juice Pouch, turns out. It's way better than the other one that is probably getting edited out on Braxton's show. Sorry about that, Braxton. I didn't mean to. You gotta cut that one out. I would. Juice Pouch, though, much friendlier. That's the way to go. I'm not great at Facebook. Hope that's okay to admit. Turns out I'm a creep on Facebook. I didn't realize that. I thought I'd find out that I'm way cool. Turns out, no. I'm a weirdo. I do stuff on there that I've never done in my regular life. I've never wandered into a stranger's house and pulled down their photo albums. <laughs> feverishly looked through every picture. <laughs> look at that, look at that. What are you doing here? Don't worry, I'm a friend of a friend. I'm just gonna look on through. I'm gonna keep that one, I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> what a creep. The creepiest Facebook thing I did was visit an ex-girlfriend's Facebook page. That's like the electronic version of driving past your ex-girlfriend's house. <laughs> did you ever do that when you were younger and didn't have any self-control? You're just driving. Why am I doing this? I shouldn't be doing this. This is a bad idea. What if she sees you? There she is! <laughs> you speed away. She's like, Steve, is that you? <laughs> yeah, you caught me. I'm just passing through the cul-de-sac. <laughs> I'm on my way. Yeah, mm, it's faster. I don't know how, don't ask. <laughs> so I type this girl's name in the search bar, press return, only to realize that is not the search bar and her name is now my status update. <laughs> just her name, just. I didn't do it on a computer, I did it on my phone, uh, which is when I found out the mobile Facebook didn't have a remove status update option. I just had to sit there while all my friends liked it and commented on it. I'm just sweating. Stop it, stop commenting. It's trending. It's getting popular. She's gonna see, and of course she did see. She was like, what are you doing, Steve? I'm like, nothing. <laughs> nothing. I was hacked. My account was hacked. <laughs> that weird virus types in your ex-girlfriend's name. <laughs> Going around, be careful. <laughs> Felt like I had to type fake status updates just to make it believable. <laughs> I was like, lose weight using this one weird trick. <laughs> Wrap your belly in cellophane. Look at the before and after. Before and after. I'm taking squunchy photos on my belly. Before. 
I always love that it's one weird trick. Lose weight using a weird trick. <laughs> why, why if, it, like, if it were to say, lose weight using diet and exercise, we'd all be like, no way. <laughs> mm-mm, mm-mm. Do you want me to do something weird? I'll do something weird, though. <laughs> I'll click on that. I love weird stuff. <laughs> it's not a good idea, guy. Mmm. What is that, water? Mm. <laughs> Technology's tricky, though. It's easy to mess it up. Like, any text messages, you can screw that up. I probably shouldn't do this joke, because this is a true story. Yeah. Roommate, don't watch this joke, okay? <laughs> I, I used to have three roommates, and uh, one of them was stinky. And, um, <laughs> you know, there's always the stinky one. And I just got home, and the house, it, it, stank, it stunk, and I was like, dude, the house smells so bad, you could tell Scott was just here. Send to Scott. <laughs> He's like, sorry, dude. I was like, I was kidding, I was kidding. I was hacked, my account was hacked. <laughs> if you remember, if you remember that problem. I don't do good with bad smells. I just can't handle bad smells for some reason. Like, if I'm talking to someone with bad breath, for whatever reason, I just don't know how to combat it. I can't, I'm gonna gag if I can't figure out what to do, so I always just blow out softly when they're talking to me. It's a bad idea. Hey Steve, how you doing? Good. Good day today, huh? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> a little breezy. It's just a little breeze. That's what you're feeling. <laughs> Feel like that's coming from you. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You're weird. You're the one. <laughs> oh, yeah. It always was me. It was, your breath is weird. It smells like you licked a, a, an antelope or something. <laughs> I'm going to have to Google you later. An ibis? Is there things called ibises? Do you even say? Lone Star. Okay, that's not, that's a beer, which makes sense for, it says Lone Star beer. I'm not an aficionado here, dry bar. I don't drink. Anyways, I don't know why I said that, but I wanted you to know. Just so you know. It's, it's maybe it's a family thing. We all sort of don't do great with bad smells. My dad uh, is bad with bad smells, which is great because me and my dad, we used to visit uh, these people once a month uh, who were hoarders. I, I mean, obviously you guys know because this is Provo, Utah, that I was my dad's home teaching companion. <laughs> If I'm outside of Utah and I say, I was my dad's home teaching companion at 15, people are just like, I thought he was homeschooled, you know? <laughs> There's something about him that says homeschooled. His dad's his home teaching companion, of course. Yeah. Yeah, so me and my dad, when I was 15, we would visit these hoarders once a month for our church. And we would just go in and hold our breath for like an hour. <laughs> just standing there. The first thing you do when you go into a hoarder's house is you play a game, uh, which is, what is a chair? <laughs> you just start looking at the piles of things. Is that a chair right there? No, not a chair. What about that pile right over there? Is that a chair? Not a chair? Oh, you guys are good at what is a chair. <laughs> this is not easy. I would have sworn that was a, it's a body. Okay. <laughs> Rest in peace, buddy. <laughs> My dad one time said we should sit down. And so he starts moving the hoarder's stuff and of course they're kind of freaking out. 
why are you touching our bus passes from 1986? Those were cataloged by month. And he just moves them all and he found a chair. He was good at the game. <laughs> found one chair, he didn't find two. So 15 year old Steve is now awkwardly trying to find a chair. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll find a chair real quick. Is, is it, why is that sticky, by the way? Why is that wet? Everything I touched, I regretted touching. My dad sees me getting more and more awkward over here, and he's like, Steve, quit doing that. Just come over here and sit on my knee. <laughs> huh? Sit on my knee. That's a good idea. <laughs> so I sat on my dad's knee. He bounced me just a little bit. <laughs> I felt better. I was colicky, apparently. <laughs> Just that little motion. <laughs> Feels good. It was totally ridiculous. A cat that they were holding prisoner just wanders through <laughs> the rubble. He hops up on my dad's other knee. The last seat in the house. The cat took it. <laughs> and promptly vomited on my dad's knee. <laughs> Didn't even waste any time. The cat was like, it smells normal here. I'll fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the hoarder's house. <laughs> so we're sitting there with cat barf on the knee and expecting the hoarders to freak out. If you've ever been at someone's house and a pet vomits, it's usually pandemonium. I was at my friend's house and a wiener dog threw up, which I didn't know it until I saw it is the funnest animal to watch throw up. None of these guys hold a candle. It's like watching a tube of toothpaste be unrolled really quick. It's like, whoa! I like that for some reason. <laughs> I didn't want to, but I liked it. And they freaked out. They were grabbing towels, they were running around. It was like a fire had caught in the house. The hoarders just sat there. They were just like, you know what, that happens. <laughs> no, no it doesn't. It's the first time I've been on my dad's lap and a cat has vomited. It's a very rare situation. <laughs> that broke my dad because he was like, okay, if they're not gonna relax, uh, I'm not gonna react. So he thought he could just kind of keep going and share the message, you know? He's, he's got me on one knee, cat barf on another. <laughs> message from Jesus in his heart. <laughs> and that's what he's there for. He tries to share that. The message this month is all, uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> The message is, <clears throat> I know my dad has a worse sense of smell problem than I do because he was also our scout master. And uh, he brought in a guy to teach us about computers. And this is the 90s. So this guy who is a computer expert in the 90s, well, he has bad hygiene because he <laughs> is a computer expert in the 90s. <laughs> He's not smoking. All the IT guys are like, I hate this guy. <laughs> Screw this guy. Turn this off right now. He didn't smell great. And my dad couldn't even introduce him. He was like, Calvin's here to teach us about how mm, mm. He caught a whiff of him and he just, that was it. He didn't even finish. He just left. He was like, hmm, mm. mm. Since all the sons are in the scouts, we all just were cracking up. We knew what had happened. He was like, dad smelled Calvin. He couldn't handle it. 
So now I'm in a much different scenario. And he's trying to come up with excuses for why he's starting to gag. He's like, my tie's too tight. <clears throat> I'm sorry. It's, it's, we're fine. The message is uh, the message is uh, the me uh. And at that point, he's gagging really loud. Just full on. And we're like, okay, Dad, you gotta stop bouncing me. So this is not good. It's not gonna end dry. And so he starts elbowing me. And I knew what that meant. The elbow move, that's a classic move. At the end of these visits, my dad would always elbow me because we would say the same thing at the end every time. We would say, is there anything we can do to help you? We would always say it at the end. Don't say it at the beginning because you've screwed up. If you say it at the beginning, you're gonna end up helping them. <laughs> say it at the end when you've stayed too long. And then they go, no, you can just get out of here. Another level of it is to have your 15-year-old son who has no skill set say it. I always felt so stupid saying it. I was like, anything we can do to help you? Do you need any Nintendo codes or? Very good. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA select start. Some kids will never know. <laughs> but we know. <laughs> yeah, so they, after I said that, they were like, nah, we're good. So we had a quick prayer and we barfed and we got out of there. <laughs> efficient. My dad's always been efficient. He, uh, there's five kids in my family. Even efficient in naming. Joe, Ben, Steve, Nate, Kate. No Braxtons in our family very one syllable. But uh, they just liked that simplicity. When we would have ice cream as a family, my dad used to run into, well, run, sure, he was very excited. We were all very excited. <laughs> ice cream! <laughs> he'd go into the kitchen and he'd grab one spoon. And we would line up oldest to youngest in the kitchen. And my dad would get a big scoop and put it in the oldest mouth and then he would go to the back of the line. And then it was the next kid's turn. Just like weird little baby birds. Just, ah, <laughs> ah, mm. <laughs> ah, mm. ah, mm. ah, And you'd always hope that you'd get the last scoop. Mmm. Just special little baby birds. That's how we ate. We're normal. I spent way too much time deciding this outfit. And uh, the stylist lady was like, don't wear the shirt with the bear on it. You look ridiculous. You look like a 12 year old. And I was like, okay, I won't wear it. I wore it. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. I haven't grown up yet. It might be why I do this now. I should have got a regular job, but this is too much fun. I used to have kind of a regular job. I used to do dispatch at the uh, hospital for helicopters which was kind of exciting and cool. And I got to work with the ER and, and see the helicopters fly around and that was exciting. And I found out a lot of people who visit the, the ER aren't honest about what got them there. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. It seems like a good time to be honest. <laughs> the ones that were the most notable were people, once a month we'd always get someone who would come in with um, something stuck, I'm gonna be delicate, in, in their bim, they would have something <laughs> stuck in their bim. And they would never tell the truth. They would always be like, listen, I was in the shower and I slipped and um, that is how my lava lamp got up there. And, uh, and you just have to be, very matter of fact with them. You're taught to be matter of fact. You just go, that could happen to anybody. <laughs> I 
mine is a bummer. Yeah. yeah thanks. Because if you freak out, if you're like, Ugh, what did you do? You know, then they're going to clinch and they're, you're never going to get it out. Be... Bummer of a day for you. But they'd always lie, you know, and, and I didn't like the lies. It was like, just be honest. I know this is embarrassing, but just be honest. That's why I liked the one guy from Wyoming. He just walked right up to the front and just goes, <laughs> I stuck a couple chestnuts up there. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why I did it. <laughs> I'm a weirdo. I'm a, something wrong with me. <laughs> I cannot get them out. I'm very sorry. <laughs> them is stuck good. <laughs> Love that guy. He's honest in a difficult situation. It's a good message. Also, I like it because of his choices. Uh, chestnuts, I feel like that's a very specific nut. <laughs> like he went shopping with that nut in mind. He's like, walnuts, no, I'm not crazy. <laughs> Ain't gonna do no peanuts neither, no way. <laughs> chestnuts, them is smooth. Let's do that. It was way better that there was two chestnuts up there. Because one chestnut says, you immediately regretted what you've done. And two chestnuts says, one chestnut was a good time. Right? <laughs> You're sitting at home with your one chestnut going, boot scooting boogie. Look at that. Look at that. What a great day. What a great weird day that I'm having. You should keep going. You bought five. Here goes number two. Two is too far. Oh, no. I do not feel good. I do not feel good. This is a horrible day. I don't, I don't even know how to walk. I'm going to have to go to the ER. Two chestnuts is an ER visit. One chestnut, good time. Two chestnuts, ER visit. I'm going to tell them the truth, though. I ain't going to tell them no squirrel story. I'm going to tell them the truth about this. And he did, he was just talking to us the whole time. I think that helped ease the tension of that weird, weird experience for him. Just in there talking, okay, <laughs> all right, you gotta get him out. So uh, whose lava lamp is that? Can I have that? Is that a, can I take that home? I'm gonna take myself home. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you so much.